Hi everyone, I'm Emil. I'm a sports scientist by training and I've been uh, practicing sports therapy as well as uh, injury prevention, exercise programming for at least eight years now. And the demographics that we work with, like we've worked with uh, dancers, athletes, sedentary individuals, even uh, national level athletes as well. So today we're actually going to be working on a very short program just to talk about the common issues that you might face in your body such as uh, lower back pain as well as neck shoulder issues. So within this masterclass, we're actually going to be touching on uh, preparation for your sports massage, what you need to prepare, your basic stuff, uh, and then uh, ethical boundaries. So how do you actually treat, let's say as a male, how do you treat a female client and the different things that you need to do with respect to that, as well as uh, even simple stuff as toweling. Okay, So you need to understand how to use a towel properly. All right, and then... From there, we will expand and explain a little bit more of how to do these sports massage techniques properly. What you're going to need to do first before you start anything is to fill up a form or at least get general information from the person that you're going to do the sports massage therapy on. So for us, in the general information, you're just going to find out who they are, their age, or an, even an emergency contact because it's important in case something happens. All right, and at the same time, you want to find out about their daily activities as well. So what are they working as? Are they sitting or standing? The percentage of time spent in doing those, the, the degree of stress, because stress also affects your body and you, it can cause you to get more stiffness. And then moving on, you actually work on, uh, you actually find out information about their medical history. So medical history, it can range from heart issues, it can range from like stroke, it can range from anything with regards to health, all right? And the reason why you need to find out about that, let's say if they have high blood or low blood pressure, they can actually faint from a sports massage if it's a little bit too painful and discomfort. So what you also want to know is like in terms of joint problems, whether they're experiencing any joint issues, okay? Because if you exert a little bit too hard or the alignment of their body is a little bit off and you exert too much pressure, it might cause a lot of pain in certain areas as well. And for women specifically, you want to find out whether or not they're pregnant. So there are certain rules when it comes to doing sports massage for pregnant women. That's all right. And then at the same time, you do want to find out about injuries or whether they had any prior surgeries. This is so as to uh, either plan ahead, know what you're doing, and also apply the right safety measures to, pre to prevent any further uh, contraindications towards those injuries that they had before. And finally, like medication and like similarly pacemakers, if you're, if they have one, that may also affect how they might react to a sports massage. Okay? So this is just the basic information that you need from a form. Alright? The next piece of tool or equipment that you need actually are towels. So a small towel, a normal bath towel is good enough for you. This one, the small towel can be used for the face, it, the face towel, or it can be used for you to actually hold it in your hand if you're not using oils or doing it dry. Alright? And then, at the same time, you want to make sure that you're also disinfecting your hand before you start any sort of therapy so that you clean your hands. Alright? And if you're using your elbows, you actually clean your elbow, you clean your hand all the way up this high so as to get rid of all the bacteria. And finally, you've got the spray and kitchen rolls so that you actually clean up the bed. So this is before you even start the session. The bed should be clean. Make sure there's no dust. Make sure it's clean from oils that maybe if you had a session before, you will want to clean it. And oil. All right. So for oils, you want to also check with your client if they have any allergies towards any type of uh, fragrances that are added into the oil. If not, you want to use an oil without any sort of chemicals in there. You want to use just normal baby oil and stuff like that, which will help for people that maybe have eczema or like minor, minor small uh, cuts in their skins as well. So safety measures they need to take note of as well is like if they have any cuts on their skins and it's an open wound, you shouldn't be doing any uh, therapy on that unless you know how to manage it. Alright, and lastly, this is a tool that can actually help your thumb. So if your thumb is not well trained, you can actually get tendonitis from it. So having a tool like this can help you prevent that. 
Alright, so prepare yourself. Make sure you've got all this ready before we continue. Alright, I'll see you later. Alright, so right now we're actually going to be working on the lower back. And the first thing that you need to do is to have oil on your head before you touch the body. Okay, so just put a little bit of oil. Just two. Two squeeze is enough. If you don't have enough oil, just add on more. Okay, so what we're actually going to do, there's different methods in which we release the muscles on the erector spinae. So the lower back is going to be this area here. So what you want to do first is actually the effleurage. So what you're going to do is you're going to move according to the muscle fibers, which is this way. Thereafter, we're going to use our wrist to actually place it on the lower back and do it perpendicular and rubbing against the fiber grains. All right. So the reason why we do that is actually to create friction within the, mu the muscles to relax a little bit. All right, so now I'm going to show you how to do it. So for me, I prefer to use my entire palm, placing it on the back. Okay, so if there's not enough oil, you'll feel that there's quite a lot of friction going through. So if there's not enough, you can always add more. Okay, or you can spread it out first. So alternatively, you can just use your thumbs. You can actually place it on the skin and rub. All right. So there's no right or wrong when you're just spreading out the oil. You can work downwards. You can work upwards. Okay. So for me, for me, I always want to work from the bottom up towards the heart. Okay. So place the pressure down and up. And using the fingers also to go up. So if a female is doing this, you might want to use your palm instead of fingers because your Fingers may be a little bit smaller, but if it's the same size as mine, you can still you do the same. Alright, so fingers and up, following the fibers all the way up. So this is just to get the blood flowing a little bit, warming up the muscle. Okay, and as you go down, you will actually feel the certain portions of the back where it's a little bit stiffer. What you want to do is use this part of your wrist where it is the hardest. Okay, use... Place these two fingers together like that, like you're gripping something, alright, on the muscle itself, so that you can guide your wrist to the muscle, alright. So, place your fingers, rest the wrist on the muscle, and then rub in perpendicular motion. So, you're creating friction against the muscle, and you're actually releasing these muscles now, okay. So you want to gradually add pressure, you don't want to just drop the weight in because you do not know how painful or the pain threshold may be. So you want to gradually add it in bit by bit. And if you feel that this is uncomfortable for you, you can even convert it into your elbows. So for elbows, this is the part where you actually want to place your weight on. So for some of you, it might be sharp. For some of you, it might be a little bit more blunt. Okay, so for someone that has a sharper elbow, you don't want to just drop the weight in. You can actually start off with your arms a little bit extended versus sharpening it. Alright, so vice versa. Alright, so the same thing. Finger, and then you place your elbow down. And then you gradually go in that perpendicular motion. Okay. And once you release that, you just work your way up. So the reason why it's so easy for me is because I already felt where the stiffness of the lower back is already. And therefore, I already can place my elbow on those points and release it easily. Once you've done that, you just want to actually relax the muscles. So for me, for this one, all I need to do is I actually place my palm here, apply a little bit of pressure and I shake it. Just to relax the muscle in case they tense up. Alright, and then thereafter we go back into effleurage again. Just to allow the person to relax and then you can prepare for the next point once more all right so right now we're going to work on the quadratus lumborium so where it is where is it located so just now we are working on the erector spinae the place that you want to actually work on is under the erector spinae all right so this is how we're going to do it how do you locate the ql so the first thing you want to search for is the bottom of the rib cage so the last point and then the other point will be where the hip bone actually juts out. Alright, so these are the two points. Where the QL is, is actually right in the middle point. Somewhere here, the mid midpoint of these two points. Okay, from here, 
what you're going to do is form a diamond shape, alright, and in that midpoint, what you're going to do is you're going to push into that point and hook up, alright, push and hook up. So I'll repeat this one more time, form a diamond shape into that middle point, push straight in and up, okay. So you hold it for about 5 seconds, depending on how stiff it is, if it's too stiff, you want to relax a little bit before they tense up, and then repeat it one more time. Alright? And for the second point of the QL, so you will hear, what you want to do is rotate 45 degrees towards the hip. Alright? From there, you do the same thing, you push straight, and then hook up. What you actually hit is where the hip bone is, hook up. And then what you do is you just rub on that point, alright, you'll feel the muscle there, and you'll slowly relax, so take about 5 seconds, 3 to 5 seconds is more than enough, and then relax. Okay, so these are the two points, first one is here, second one rotate 45 degrees and to the hip. Now that we are done with the lower back release of the erector spinae and the quadratus lumborum or the QL, we are going to move up to the neck and shoulder area. So the two muscles that we're going to release are the trapezius and the levator scapula. So right now we're going to release the trapezius or traps for short form. So how are we going to release this? First you need to find those points. So it might look very complicated here on top. But you can actually find the point right at the end where the scapula actually meets the shoulder joint. It, there's a notch here, right? It's almost like a drain. Right, so right at this bottom point will be the start, and as you trace that line straight up, it actually leads up to the side of the neck. This whole area here will be the trap, and what you want to actually do is to find the midpoint, and that midpoint you will actually find a like a round, round knot, or even like a button-like point. What you want to do, same thing, form that diamond shape again into that point. All you need to do. If you find it hard to actually push into this area to release it, what you can do is to lock your elbows. Alright, remember to lock your elbows, use your body weight, lean down a little bit and push in. Alright, for someone that has a very big trap, you want to do that so that you can actually go deep enough to release that point. Alternatively, if you're doing it for someone that's slightly thinner or petite, then of course you don't want to exert too much force. So same thing. You release into that point, you push into that point and release the muscles. Okay, so how do you do f rod? Is to actually go in this motion. Okay, so following the muscle fiber. And once you've actually done that as the warm up, then you release this, this point. Okay. And that's for after you've released the trap, what you're actually going to release next is actually the levator scapula. So, how do you locate the levator scapula? It is actually from this point where the trap ends. You just need to shift down a little bit and it is just above the scapula. Okay? So the scapula is actually this here, this bone. Alright? What it actually does for the levator scap is to actually pull it up. And that's why they call it the levator scapula. Alright? So how do you locate the points to release? Okay? Same thing. It's from this notch, but you shift down a little bit. You can actually feel that muscle fiber, but it starts somewhere in between. So, halfway of the scapula on the top, you will find one point. And the other, as you draw a straight line across, just before the spine. This whole area is actually the levator scapula. And what you want to do is to stop halfway. And you will actually find the same thing, you'll find a small button there. Alright, so that button is almost like, a, it's actually a trigger point, which helps to release that muscle. So what you want to do, same thing, f first. Always make sure you warm up the muscles. Alright, after you've warmed up the muscles, then go back to that point. Go into the point and go in a friction motion. So remember how the muscle is actually formed and where does it originate and insert at. So that you know which direction you should be releasing the muscle. Okay, so once you've done this, you can repeat this a few times if you feel that there's a lot of sensation and a little bit of pain that travels up towards the neck or the head. Then 
you repeat it again and again, and then go back into Afrat, rubbing it through one more time to relax the muscles, and you're done. So that's how you release the elevator scapula. Now that we've completed the sports massage workshop, if you're interested to dive deep with us to find out more about the inner workings of the body and how to locate major muscle groups of the body to release the body's tension and aches that might be occurring in the body, sign up for our course now and I'll see you there.